Day, D21st of so uh, August. We're down now to the uh, third trading day uh, of the week. My name is Boston Alofai. Thank you very much, everyone, for making the time to watch this show, as always, uh, online on Front Africa Reports. Let's uh, quickly uh, run you through the trading day. For Tuesday, a little bit of mixed. We've got the markets down in Zimbabwe slightly by just a few basis points, despite uh, gains posted by big names such as Econet Wireless. The market uh, in Zimbabwe was down. The mid market at the ZSE uh, slightly uh, on, on Tuesday. You've got a few names. The market, Citco, Hippo, the CBZ Bank, and then a few others. Uh, look at the Southern Africa's trading day. That's the GSE down by 0.02%, despite 1.4% upside that we saw uh, on the resources, big names of the market for Tuesday. Uh, the industrial and the financial uh, indices were in the negative territory. The Nairobi stock market was better by 0.64%. The Egyptian market came back after two straight sessions of decline. Sunday and Monday, Tuesday was better, 2.03%. Taking the EGX 30 close to 30,000 reading. If that trend we saw yesterday continues, that is expected to take the EGX to the 30,000 new reading. The BRVM in Cote d'Ivoire was up by roughly 20 basis points, while the Nigerian market turned positive by 12 basis points. Let's take it down and look into what's making the uh, headlines uh, across the Eastern African corridor. Mombasa Cement uh, is looking to construct a 20 megawatts plant in uh, Vipingo pay, uh, area, while the feature ratings is caught KCB Bank of Kenya, the NCBA, and IM Bank are credit ratings because of their huge debt portfolio. And Turkey is looking to start oil exploration in Somalia, just as we saw the start today of the Namibia's oil and gas conference. Uh, we got uh, eye on the ground on that uh, conference for you over the next uh, three days. And Tanzania's investment center says it's registered 409 projects and is looking at about uh, $8.5 billion in total investment inflows for the current year, 2024. In Rwanda, uh, Samoa Cement has appointed um, uh, Mangesh as a new chief executive uh, officer. Congratulations to him as he takes uh, the reign of affairs of this listed cement giant. All right, let's touch on in West Africa. Nigeria Central Bank reporting yesterday that's about 130% upside in diaspora investments to about $553 million for the month of July. That's on an analyzed basis. Transco Power, however, says it's appointed a new non-executive director. Christopher is the Afro is joining the board of the power company that reported 11.4 billion naira in interim dividend for the first six months of this year after it was listed early in the year on the Nigerian exchange. President Akufuado in Ghana is taking the whole race for refineries in West Africa a step further. Yesterday he turned the sword, technically laying the foundation for the $12 billion petroleum refinery that uh, Ghana is looking to build, the refinery will have a capacity to refine 300,000 barrels per day. Nigeria's Dangote refinery will still, however, remain the king with 650,000 barrels per day capacity. But the race across West Africa to build refineries is on. Nigeria's got an independent one. Ghana wants to build a new one. Liberia is also uh, looking at building a new petroleum refinery. In Senegal, still within this West African region, a set up a commission or a new agency to track all the oil and gas contracts that's been done under the previous administration to ensure the transparency and integrity uh, of those uh, contracts. In the meantime, Gambia, the Gambia and India are uh, in talks for collaboration around critical minerals sector. The Gambia is known as West Africa's iconic tourism destination. Now the country wants to do a lot more than inviting Boots on the ground to enjoy the beautiful scenery, the ocean fronts, and what have you in the Gambia. They want to join the resource industry, and that's critical minerals there. Let's uh, take it to West Af East, uh, to Southern Africa, and of course we've got uh, we've got a lot of rat of earnings yesterday. Sasso still there in the news, by the way, reporting. His first loss since 2020 because of the write downs of about $3.5 billion for his American chemical business. Those impairments hurt the companies, uh, fuel and chemical companies uh, listed on the GSC for between January and, and June. This HSBC says he's looking to sell down its units uh, in South Africa and focus on his Asia business. 
And good news for South Africa, so Airlink, the airlines got in 25% equity stake pick up by Qatar Airways for an undisclosed amount of cash. And uh, good news also for Malawi, $11.2 million is what the uh, president, the country has received uh, to support the drought, the impact of droughts on agricultural products and livestock in the Southern African uh, uh, economy. That for support came from the African Risk Capacity, the ARC Group, which is uh, uh, an, a subsidiary and agency of the African Union, as well as the African Development Bank Group, the AFDB. And finally, in Southern Africa, Botswana has allocated $97 million to address the worst droughts in decades. And that's a big problem as well. Tracking right now from Malawi to Botswana to Zambia, Zimbabwe, parts of South Africa. It's all about climate change and its devastating impact on food and livestock as well as humans in those regions. Let's sum it up in North Africa with Libya's central bank says it's stopping all operations because the head of his uh, technology departments has been uh, kidnapped. That's the um, a story uh, this morning has been, ad- uh, the, has been adopted. Then, of course, you've got yesterday the UN Security Council getting a briefing on the state of affairs of politics and economy and security in Libya. There was a report about the, uh, what the UN authorities have been able to do with the boots on the ground since the 9th of August. That briefing took place yesterday with the pressure on the Libya's central bank to continue running the economy in a transparent manner. Will the governor of the Libya's central bank remain on the seat? That's part of the discussion yesterday uh, in terms of that presentation to the UN Security Council. In the meantime, Morocco and Israel have seen trade between the two countries surge a record 64%. That's about 53 million US dollars between uh, the first part of this year, despite the ga- war in Gaza between Israel and the militants group Hamas. President El Sisi of Egypt has extended the tenure of the central bank governor of the country by just one year in order to continue uh, the uh, reforms that's currently ongoing. And of course, you know, the Egypt is under discussions with the IMF and the World Bank for those uh, funding support. And part of that is the increase that we've seen in the news this Wednesday that uh, energy prices going up in Egypt, by the way, uh, for households, tough time on the ground. And finally, the country is supporting uh, foreign debt down about $7.4 billion in the first quarter, January to March. Those are your headlines across Africa. Frontier opening bell this Wednesday. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day and watch the show again on online. Follow us on, t- on Twitter and across all the other social media platforms as well as our YouTube. It's free. Do subscribe. Bye for now.